so nice to see all of you. I've been uh, very excited and I'm very happy to be here right now. My name is Sina Sylvester and I help artists and creatives to find the courage and also the skills that they need in order to build a sustainable business but also a purposeful career as artists, as creatives. And the reason I'm invited here today has everything to do with what I do, together with my clients. Because basically what I do is to inspire them and help them to find the courage to share their work of art with the world. And from that actually being able to also earn a living from their talents. So I work with the theme of today, I work with courage every single day. It's working. Okay. Um, but actually, I would like to start out with talking about the complete opposite. To talk about fear. And I would like to ask you, just to for a moment, think about when was the last time that you felt so scared that your body froze and all air just disappeared from the room. Just for a second, like, just think about like when... When was the last time you felt really scared of doing something, or overcoming something? See, I want to tell you that the last time I felt that scared was a few days ago when I was preparing for the speech. And also right now when I was introduced, I was like, I could just run out the door and never come back and no one will notice that I was ever here. Um, it's extremely scary to stand up here. But I am here right now today with all of my anxiety, with all of my nervous energy, and with all of my, to be honest, all of my fear to fail in front of you. And the reason why I'm able to do this is because I actually do believe that everyone in here, all of you, have tried to be in my shoes. Maybe not on a stage, but to stand in a situation that felt Maybe a little bit uncomfortable, or maybe you felt very scared. But you did something. It didn't stop you. So, I do believe that you know how I'm feeling right now, standing up here. And that's also why I trust that you will support me, even though I fail. Will you support me? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I feel so much better now. Good. <laughs> this story is actually not about all of my fears or about my anxiety, or my panic attacks, or my fear of speaking in public. This story is actually about how I realized that my fear is what makes me brave. The fact that I am scared is how I know that I have courage. And it starts at the Chaos Pilots. I've studied design and business and entrepreneurship at the Chaos Pilots in Aarhus. And during the first year of uh, my education, we had a workshop where we talked about strengths, like personal strengths, and leadership. And in that context, we all got a uh, personal strength assessment. So, you know, one of those kinds where you answer a bunch of questions, and then you get a nice graph telling you something about yourself that you most likely already knew. Yeah? When I got my strength profile back, and I was looking through it, I was like, this is wrong. Something is completely off here. Um, so I took the profile and I walked up to the teacher and I told her, I think maybe I misunderstood some of the questions, or is it possible that maybe you made a mistake in the analysis? Because on this profile, it said that my strongest feature was courage. And I was like, that's not true. <laughs> that's just, I don't feel brave or courageous. I feel fucking scared all the freaking fucking time. I was scared of needles, like extremely scared of needles. I was scared of speaking in public, and I was even, at this time in my life, I was so scared of speaking in public that it was a struggle to even speak in front of my classmates. Even though 
I knew that like they were there for me. But it was a big struggle for me. I felt a lot of fear when I was around strangers. Like <coughs> this thing, I would <laughs> it makes me really scared to be together with a lot of strangers because they don't know you and you don't know me. And that scares me a little bit at least. And I also told her, the teacher, that I really hate networking events. <laughs> I, I, I just, I don't like them. I also told her that I had almost not applied for the Chaos Pilots because I was so scared that my language skills wasn't good enough, that I wasn't good enough. So I almost hadn't applied. See, then she asked me, Sina, has your fear of needles ever stop you from going to countries where you need a vaccine in order to go? And I said, no, I've actually, I've traveled the world, and every time I needed to get a vaccine, of course I did it. It wasn't pleasant, I wasn't happy, but I did it, because I wanted to go to those countries. She said, okay. Then she asked me, has, has your fear of speaking in public ever stopped you from speaking your mind if it was really important to you? And I said, no, I might not feel really comfortable doing so, but if it's really important for me, of course I'll speak my mind. I find a way to find the courage to actually speak my mind, if it's important to me. Then she asked me if my fear of being in a networking setting and being around strangers had ever kept me from connecting with the people I wanted to connect with. And I said, no. I've always found a way to connect with the people who I truly wanted to connect with. Maybe not in the networking setting itself, but then in some other place. And I think you know where this is going, as well as I did. Like, I don't even have to, like, she didn't have to ask the last question, because of course, I almost hadn't applied, but I actually did, I did apply, even though I was scared. And I was at the school, I was going through this education, even though I felt scared. And then she said, if your fear doesn't hold you back from what you truly want, then I would say that one of your strengths, one of your strengths are courage. And I was like, yeah, okay. But this doesn't feel like courage. This feels really scary. But even though uh, it still feels scary, I took my <laughs> strength profile and I went back to my chair and I was like, <coughs> okay, so if this is true, and I, like, I was thinking a bit about it, and this is what I realized, and what I also want to share with you, that courage has absolutely nothing to do with being reckless, or extravagant, or wild, or outgoing, and maybe that's how I perceive a courageous per person, or a brave person, someone who are all of those things, which I don't see myself being. I also realize that courage has nothing to do with how others perceive your action, whether others other perceive your action as brave or not. Because if you are actually facing something that's overwhelming or scary or terrifying, and it doesn't stop you from going through it anyways, then you are brave, then you have courage. It doesn't matter if it's a fear that no one else can relate to. <coughs> So I realized that courage is the ability to act even though something feels really, really scary. Especially the ability to act when something is truly important to you. Even though it feels scary to both of you. And that's really how I know that I am scared. <coughs> because I still feel scared. I feel scared all the time. I felt scared when I walked up here. I feel scared. A lot of time at least. But that's also how I know and how I remind myself whenever I have those feelings. Instead of um, being mad at myself or being annoyed that I'm scared and I, I feel all these feelings. Instead of, like, instead of being mad at myself, I'm reminding myself that the reason I feel scared is because I'm doing something great right now. And that's really really, truly, a good thing to remind oneself about. Now, Miguel said that uh, sometimes I have a hard time to like, say that I'm courageous. 
But truly, to be courageous is just to know this, that whenever you feel fear, then you're doing something brave or courageous. That leads to the question, how do we actually get the courage to act, even though something is very, very terrifying? And I found that a lot of the time it's the fear of not being accepted that is holding us back from acting. When I work with um, the artists and the creatives, a lot of the time the first thing that we have to work with is not taxes or budgets or marketing, even though that's what you would think. And that's also what I tell them that I would like to help them with. But the first, the very first thing we have to deal with is their fear of putting their work of art out into the world, sharing their talent with the world, and committing to showing up to interact with their customers, with their partners, with their peers, every single day. That's the very first thing we have to tackle. And I understand this because some of those fears are really real to my clients and also to myself. Is the fear of not being accepted by society because you chose a different path? The fear of not being accepted by your fellow artists, by your peers, because you're not doing the right kind of art? Or not being accepted by the galleries because you're not being commercial enough? <coughs> or even not being accepted by your family because you might not be able to provide the kind of income that they would have expected of you? And all of these fears are holding us back from doing what we truly want and what we truly need to achieve in life in order to live up to our potential. And these fears become so much more, uh, become so much bigger, stronger. I don't know how to say that. These fears become so much more real when you have the feeling of being alone with it all. And a lot of the people I'm working with on a daily basis, they are solopreneurs. Like they are artists working by, the, by themselves in an atelier or in a gallery, but they work by themselves quite a lot. And if any of you are solopreneurs or self-employed or just work a lot alone, then you know these feelings as well, I'm quite sure. The feeling of being alone with all of the fear, all of the failures, all of the worries, but also to be alone with all of the successes and the dreams and the opportunities, to be alone with all of these feelings can make it very, very hard to overcome this fear of being accepted. Because if you are alone with all of these feelings, it might feel like the acceptance you seek, the acceptance we all seek from society and our friends and family and peers, depends on whether you're successful. I don't know if any of you have this feeling, but it's very, very true. It has been very true for myself. It's very true for the people I work with every day. That there is this idea that if I'm not successful, then my peers will not accept my, me. Then my friends might start to question what I'm doing. Then society might say, go get a real job. Like, there is this idea that if I'm not, if I'm not successful, then I cannot be accepted. And I realized that the reason that I have the amount of courage I have is because I have a very strong personal and professional support system. It's because I don't feel alone. I was never in doubt that my family had my back, that I had my family's full support. I also have a boyfriend who is very patient and very, very nice. And he always supports me and has my back. But not only do I have a very strong personal support system, I also have a very strong professional support system. This space is called... I sit down here and I work every day, and as Sasha told you, we are maybe 30, 30, 30 people down here. I think maybe 20 companies or something. And we all work on our individual things, but these people down here, they are my professional family. Like these people are my support system.
So it's very important to have this support system. <coughs> and when you have a support system like this, it becomes so much more easy to be brave, to do something that might not feel uh, comfortable, but to actually go the extra mile and take a, new, take a new direction. Because what is the worst thing that can happen? You have a strong support system, then it's really only your ego that's at risk. Because your support system, they don't care whether you fail or whether you succeed. They care about your happiness and they care about you living up to your full potential. If I fail, if I fail miserable today, I have no doubt in my mind that the five people sitting down there and the three awesome girls standing over there. They would come up to me in a second, they would give me a hug and they would say, Sina, it's okay, you did good. I have no doubt about that. Even though I fail, they would still be there. If I succeed, I'm quite sure I would also get a hug. I'm quite sure they would also be there for me if I succeed. And that's just extremely important in order to do things that you feel scared about. And then, Truly, it's only my ego that's at risk. It can only be my, like, my ego. And for people like me, who are very ambitious, hardworking, and have very high expectations to themselves, we should actually learn to put our ego at risk a little more. We should learn to practice failure. Because really, we'll realize, I will realize, you will realize, that we don't die. And our support system will be there to catch us. So, the very important point, you need to seek out and cultivate these personal and professional support systems. They don't, they don't just appear by themselves. So I've been very lucky because I wasn't aware that this was why I was being brave, just as I actually wasn't aware I was being brave. But the fact that I have had these support systems in my life have, is, is the reason I can do what I'm doing today. But you have to cultivate it. You have to like nurture it. And I'm not a relationship coach. So the part about the personal <coughs> support system, you need to figure that out yourself. <laughs> or <laughs> find another expert to help you with that. But if you are interested in figuring out like what you could do right now to cultivate your professional support system. I have three ideas for you. Okay, so first of all, become a part of a professional community. Like I already told you, this community right here is very important for me. So it could be uh, to become a part of a shared atelier or a co-working space, an office hub. It doesn't really matter. Just make sure that you surround yourself with people that inspire you and that support you. And that you are also willing to support when they are going through a tough time or when they are having a really successful time. These communities are so important. If you already have a professional community, like if you are part of a, a workplace, for instance, if you are an employee somewhere, then I would really encourage you to like Create small clubs, like make a breakfast club or a coffee club or have like long lunches if that's even possible. Um, just make sure that you sit down with the people you're working with and ask them, hey, how are you doing? What's up? What are you working at? And not in a, hey, let's talk business, more in a, I'm just listening to what you're going through right now. Successes or failures or whatever. Just like, like make those small uh, interactions and do it more regularly. The second thing is to join a mastermind or a networking group. So if you would like something that's a little bit more structured, it's a really good idea. And the point here is, the point here is to meet up maybe once a week or once a month. And then you have this small group of people, five to ten people maybe, and you hold each other accountable on the goals that you're setting. So each time you meet up, you'll share where you're at, how it went, 
what's going on in your life. And these people, if you meet up on a regular basis, they will be one of your strongest support systems. And they will be there for you, just like you will be there for them. This is also why that when I'm doing courses, uh, it's in small groups of five to ten people. Because I want them not only to have me as a mentor and as a teacher, but I want them to actually be able to use each other, to help each other, also after the course ends. ends so that they actually have something that they can build on. So I'm very much trying to cultivate that in my work. The last thing is to get a mentor or a coach. The good thing here is that with a mentor or a coach, like all focus is on you. And you have, it's, it's, uh, it's especially good if you have something very specific that you want to overcome, like a fear or a goal you want to achieve or anything. If you have like a specific thing that you would like to solve or be able to act upon. A mentor and a coach can be a very big help, because here not only is the focus on you, but you also sit in front of a professional who most likely has been through what you are going through right now. So they know how you feel, they know all of the fears, all of the emotions you're going through. And that empathy can create a really strong relation that can help you also to find the courage to actually go out and do what you are supposed to do with your life. This is, of course, also what I do in my work when I have one-on-one -on -one clients. Do you have one yourself? A mentor? Yeah. Mm, not on a regular basis, but I have like <coughs> the guys down here. I think I have three people down here that I talk to every single week. And those people, they don't know that they are my mentors, but they are. <laughs> <laughs> and I look very much up to them. And they inspire me so much. So I have it in the community. And I also don't think that you you might not need all three, like but you need to figure out like where like how can you get the best support system for like your situation. I've had uh, when I was going through like a specific struggle, I did seek out a mentor to help me out with like, okay, so what, what do I do with this? So for me, it's more like a, if I'm standing in front of a very concrete problem, then I think a mentor and a coach can be a very big help. Yeah. <laughs> so, to sum this little talk up, courage is when you decide to act upon something you truly want, even though it feels scary. Courage has nothing to do with how other perceives your actions, only how you feel about them. And again, that you actually act, even though it would be easier in the moment to run away and not do it. With a strong personal and professional support system, the only thing that's really at risk is your ego. And honestly, your ego can handle it. <laughs> so seek out and cultivate professional support system through communities, through masterminds, and through coaching. And my very last point, if there's nothing else you take away from today, then give yourself credit for being brave. The next time you feel really scared, just think, it's because I'm really, really fucking brave <laughs> right now. If you want to know more about me or my work, you can go to my website, sinusulesta.dk. You can also find me on Instagram, also just my name. And I also have a podcast called The Creative for Acting. And uh, you can find that on uh, iTunes and most other <laughs> podcast apps. Mm -hmm. And now I believe it's time for questions. Yes.